max vertical jump. So I just want to go over a couple quick tips on this and whether you're testing on a just jump pad, uh, Vertec, or there's lots of other variations out there now, but I just want to kind of go over a couple tips on this. So on the max vertical jump, we want to understand that the counter movement of our arms is going to be extremely important and the sinking of our hips, that counter movement also. So we're going to be in a good athletic position, right? Feet square, toes pointed forward. Abs are going to be tight on this. Our shoulders over our hips, hips over our toes, and everything's aligned. From there, the faster and more violent we can move our arms, the more force we can take into the ground to help push ourselves up and then go up from there. So a couple things. If we're doing a just jump pad, right, so then we're not reaching for something, that's really, really important. Going up, ripping through, and then landing correctly. And one, if you're an athlete, or two, if you're a coach, not cheating that by tucking your legs or sinking and then catching by just landing normal so you can get a true result, right? When we're testing athletes, it's just to say, hey, is our programming working? Or am I increasing what I've been doing and working so hard? Am I increasing on what I've been trying to do? So if a vertical jump increase was a goal, don't cheat yourself at the beginning or you'll be cheating your test results at the end. So from here, then, it's that fast, real quick movement. And we got to find the spot. There's a sweet spot. So we don't want to go too low with our hips, but we don't want to go not deep enough. So we're, we're ripping through with those arms sinking, and it's going to be about right at this position. Anything lower, I'm going to spend too much time going down and up, and it's going to be too slow. I'm trying to go in and out of the ground as fast as I can. So as I do that now, I've loaded the calves, glutes. I've loaded my quads, and then I'm about to take off and stay. So as I extend, I need to be a rod from my ear all the way through my ankles, rip and go up, and it's almost a slight forward lean. I'll probably land in the same spot, but I'm not really going forward, and I definitely don't want to go backwards. So if it's a vertex and we're reaching, the goal is then we want to stand with the vertex probably out in front of us just a little bit, not behind us, because we want to shoot our arm through our ear. So we're going to be through our ear, reaching here. This is going to be our highest point right here, and we don't want to have to be going back or trying to hit forward. So on that, then it's, a really, it's really detrimental because you can take inches off if you don't hit that right spot. So when you're testing vertical, it's just important to understand that all of them are not perfect. A just jump is an equation. A vertex is going to be cheated. No matter what, as you jump in the air, you sink this arm higher, or you shoot this arm higher, you sink this shoulder down. It's really hard to get that standing measurement, and then the dynamic movement is going to reach that arm even higher. So that's kind of messing up with the validity of your test, too. So remember, I don't really ever care about numbers when athletes tell me about numbers. What I care about is where we started where we're trying to finish, do we test the same at the beginning, do we test the same at the end, and then is our programming and protocol working to get their vertical to increase, because then I don't even care what the vertical is, is that making them a better athlete? So keep this simple and smart, don't get caught up on numbers, but think about loading the glutes, getting that counter movement of the arms, making sure the abs are tight, reaching the right spot, and putting that force and velocity through the ground as fast as you can, spending the least amount of time on the ground to jump and reach as high as you can.